An early, more radical departure from hand washing had been used by sailors for centuries. The combination of agitation and a constant flow of clean water washed them fairly effectively, even without soap. Another way of forcing water through the clothes is to make them tumble over each other in a drum. The earliest record of a machine of this type dates from 1782. This was the forerunner of much larger laundry machines that rotated the drum and heated the water with steam. In many respects, laundry machines have remained unchanged, with the clothes tumbling over each other in a large drum. But although 140 years ago the basic principles of industrial machines had been perfected, domestic machines remained extremely primitive. The arrival of reasonably small electric motors at the beginning of the 20th century made a large number of washing actions possible. These early machines were particularly popular in America, where they were viewed with great pride. This machine was imported from Canada to Britain in the 1920s. The motor sits underneath, connected by a system of belts and gears. It's really rather a splendid contraption. Inside, there's a paddle that goes backwards and forwards, very much the same shape as the old washing dolly. But these machines had very serious disadvantage that they often leaked quite a bit and, and, the, mo and the water used to drip down on, on the motor and the switch and all the wires and because water is a conductor the, the whole machine could easily become live. I mean I've just got a little shock off this. Safety was quite an important reason for enclosing the whole machine in a single case like this with motor and wires and tub all in one. The first machines like these, looking a bit like a modern washing machine, appeared in the mid-1930s. The water still had to be heated in a separate wash boiler. How's it coming, Lynn? Well, there I was, at 20,000 feet. The idea of a fully automatic washing machine came from America. The first ones appeared in the 1920s, but it was another 30 years or so before they started to become practical labour-saving devices. Brother, get this, Carol. Hmm? What does the emancipation of American women mean to you? I know. Women's right to vote. That's the biggest thing that's happened to women since... Since Adam's apple. Carol, you sweet dumb thing. Pull up your flaps. You're dragging. Oh, my gosh. That's a terrific angle. Talk about emancipation. Take the family wash, for instance. No more clotheslines. No more dark basements. No more blue Mondays. Boy, here's real emancipation from old-fashioned chores. Just set a dial and walk away. Well, that's the kind of emancipation any woman can understand. The first automatics appeared in Britain in the 1950s, imported from America. These machines were extremely expensive, costing as much as a small car, and most households still had no washing machine at all. Then, in the early 1960s, this machine appeared. It wasn't fully automatic, it had separate wash and spin tubs, but it was, compared to all its competitors, amazingly cheap. Which twin tub should you buy? Independent tests show rolls as good value for money. So if you want a twin tub that's good and quick for washing, easy to use, electrically safe, good value for money, and also gives up to a maximum of £35 in part exchange, then you must choose a Rolls. 
Yes, a Rolls. For full details of the Rolls Concord models and this week's special offers, fill in the Rolls coupon in today's papers now. The Rolls Company, owned by John Bloom, went bankrupt in 1964, but by that time had enormously expanded the market for washing machines. Well, so much for the history. But how does a modern machine actually work? Well, Rex Garrod and I have made a series of models and demonstrations to explain some of the mysteries of what's inside a modern washing machine. Well, one of the first things you notice when you take the top off is often an enormous lump of concrete. On this machine, we've taken those large blocks of concrete out so you can see exactly what happens. The concrete's there to damp out the machine's vibrations. Well, every structure or machine has natural resonant frequencies at which the vibration can become excessive. Occasionally, this can be useful, as I'll show you. <laughs> 